Good morning to you. I am Mark Suddeth, and here's what's up in the tropics. It is Friday, the 19th of August, 2022. Here's what we've got going on. We have Invest Area 99L National Hurricane Center issuing a special advisory just a little while ago, now indicating 60% chance that this goes on to develop into at least a tropical depression. Recon will be out there in just a little while and will let us know a lot more about what is going on with this system. I'll show you on satellite in just a minute that it looks like it's flaring up and this has a pretty good shot at becoming a tropical depression or maybe even a tropical storm before moving in to northeast Mexico over the next couple of days. Here is the five-day outlook for it. It'll be inland well before five days. Here's the satellite animation of it. There it is. Definitely a blow up of deep thunderstorm activity. We call that convection and it's got a pretty good area of high pressure above it. I'll show you that in just a moment. Favorable overall conditions. Kind of a small feature. It's not a large envelope of energy like we see with these big tropical waves that come off of Africa. And I think that might be a reason why the global computer models, their resolution isn't handling the development of this system very well. But it is definitely there. We can see it very nicely here on the vorticity signature. This is another reason why I really like this product because you can see underneath the cloud cover at what the overall structure of the system is like. And there it is, part of it still straddling land. But once this gets out fully over at the Bay of Campeche, I think this has a pretty good chance of becoming at least a tropical depression, and maybe even a tropical storm. We'll wait and see what the National Hurricane Center says, assuming that recon does go out there later today. Water temperatures, definitely warm enough. We're talking 30 degrees Celsius or about 85 degrees Fahrenheit all along the path of this system. So ample upper ocean heat content and just general very warm surface temperatures for this to work with. And the upper level winds are very favorable as well for this system. Look at that right over the top of it right there. Perfect anti-cyclone aloft. That's the air way up at the uh, level of the atmosphere where commercial airliners fly, the 200 millibar level. Uh, I mean, that's like an umbrella of perfection, so to speak. Very light winds aloft, so there's no shear down there for this to have to contend with. It'll be a matter of does the low-level center consolidate underneath this and try to make something of itself before moving inland somewhere over here along the northeast coast of Mexico. That area of upper-level favorability follows the system inland, so it definitely has an opportunity here to develop. Meanwhile, as we look out across the rest of the tropics, the eastern Atlantic just about as unfavorable as you could ask for due to this very stable air mass and you can tell that it is there because of the cloud signature, this stratocumulus layer, very stable air coming in from the northeast, dipping down all the way into the deep tropics. However, it does look like that's going to try to change the ECMWF here, as this tweet from Ben Knoll is suggesting, the operational, its ensembles, and several other models, indicating that in the 7 to 10 day time frame, we should see a gradual changeover to a pattern that is more conducive, less stable, so more instability, which means that there would be more deep thunderstorm activity and the possibility of tropical cyclone development way out in the deep tropics. And we actually need to watch the Gulf of Mexico, the Canadian model, uh, indicating the possibility of some development there. There's plenty to watch, even though the global models are not suggesting much right now. I think, as I'm gonna talk about in my hurricane outlook and discussion video later today, that we're seeing a shift to where September and October could be quite busy, whereas we're used to seeing things busy in August and September. I believe that this year that's going to be shifting, and it's going to be a much busier September and October, and maybe even into the early part of November than we are used to seeing. I'll talk about my theory behind that again later this afternoon on my hurricane outlook and discussion. All right, that is it for me for this morning. Have a great rest of your Friday. As I said, I will be back with a lengthier Hurricane Outlook video later today, so be sure to catch that. I'm Mark Sutta. Thanks for watching. This has been What's Up in the Tropics. I'll talk to you again later this afternoon.